Today I'm going to demonstrate bootstrapping a confidence interval on a data set using Google Sheets. Now, what is bootstrapping? Bootstrapping in general refers to any technique that resamples data randomly with replacement. I'll explain what that is here in just a little bit. Uh, but remember, I said I'm going to be demonstrating how to get a confidence interval on a data set. And why would I want to do that? We already have some ways to go about getting a confidence interval. Uh, for example, here I have a data set and I calculated the mean on that data set and the standard deviation. And I looked up the z-score in a table for a 90% confidence interval. And then I calculated that confidence interval. And I didn't need bootstrapping for that. This is what I haven't explained yet. So one of the things that getting confidence intervals from lookup tables like that relies on is some assumption about how the data set is distributed. So for example, this z-score assumes that the data follows a normal distribution function. So uh, the data is distributed in the symmetric bell-shaped curve. Now, what if the data isn't um, symmetric? Or what if it's skewed to the left? Or what if it's skewed to the right? Or what if the data is distributed in a strange way? Let's say there are multiple peaks in the probability distribution. Um, then we, we might not be able to rely on these data tables to help us calculate confidence intervals. And so here, this data set kind of looks like a set of grades, and I'll probably refer to it as a set of grades. But, you know, this could represent, uh, maybe you perform some tests on a machine and you recorded the time to which it failed. Maybe that would better follow a Weibull distribution instead of a normal distribution. Or maybe you're looking at tolerance measurements or, or something else. So the beauty about bootstrapping is that it doesn't rely on any underlying assumptions about the distribution. Now, before I get started and show you what it actually is, we're going to need a few tools. I mentioned that we need to randomly sample with replacement. So to do that, we're going to require some sort of random generator. And Excel or here Google Sheets, both of them have built-in random number generators. So I can find a random number between, I'll do an example, a low value of zero and a high value. And what's nice about Google Sheets here is notice this pop-up menu. It tells me what the function is going to do. This is going to return a uniformly random integer between the two values. So I'm going to say between zero and five and two. And I think every time I type something new in a cell, this random value here will update. There we go. Here, I pulled five. And if I type something different, I, ah, four. OK, so a random number generator is working. Now, I said I'm going to have to pull numbers with replacement, or pull from my data set with replacement. Here I have a little data set of characters. A, B, C, D, E, and F. I'm going to combine my random number generator with this offset function. So if I use offset, I can first select a reference cell. Here I'm going to pick H3 as my reference cell. And then I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, the um, the offset in rows and I don't want to change rows in this case I want to stay with this row where my data set is and then I'm going to offset columns so this is just how, how many cells I want to offset from my reference cell so in this case I want to pick some number between 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. So if I offset 5, I'll pick F. If I offset 0, I'll pick A. And we just 
uh, reviewed a function about how to do that. So random between 0 and 5. OK. Ah, I picked E. Now, I can uh, drag this formula over. If I do it right now, it's not going to work very well. Ah, something strange happened. Well, by dragging over, I typically copy automatically what's in this cell. So what's in this cell here. So if I click here, notice it's pretty much the same, but my reference cell changed to I3. I don't want it to do that. I want to always have my reference cell be A3. So to fix that, I can insert these dollar signs to fix the uh, columns and the rows. And so now if I copy over, I have the same formula in each cell. And I have resampled from this group with replacement. If I had a bag full of balls and I wrote A, B, C, D, E, and F on each of my six balls respectively, I could pick out a ball. In this case, I might randomly pick out the ball labeled B. And I'll write that down. I put the ball labeled B back, shake up my bag, and I'll pull out the ball labeled F. Put that ball back, shake it up, pull out the ball labeled D. Put that ball back, I shake it up, up, I pulled the same ball out again, labeled D. That's what I mean by with replacement. Okay, so we already have the tools ready to do a bootstrap simulation. And by the way, this bootstrap simulation is a subset. You might have heard the term Monte Carlo simulation. That just means we're using some sort of random. Monte Carlo just means we're using uh, just some sort of random number in, in a simulation to perform some task. OK, so here I have my data set again. And I can describe this data set a little bit. Um, for example, if I wanted to know how many uh, grades I had or uh, pieces of data I had in my data set, I can use some other built-in functions like count. Of course, there's only a small number here. I probably could have just done that on my fingers. Um, I can use some functions to calculate other test statistics like the mean. And this is the test statistic that I want to find my 90% confidence interval on in this example. So average and select my data set. And there's the mean of my sample. And now I'm going to resample new sets of data. So I'm going to create new sets of 19 data elements by drawing with replacement from this data set. We're going to use our offset function. We're going to reference this first element in my data set. And remember, I want to keep that fixed. So I'll add these dollar signs. I'm going to always reference the same row. And I'm going to reference um, some random number between 0 and 18. Because remember, 0 will, we have 19 elements total. But when we're offsetting, 0 is going to get us this first cell. 18 will get us this last cell. OK. Oops, what did I mess up? Oh, spelling helps. Random and between. There we go. OK. Give it a second. All right, we've resampled our data one time. And I can calculate the test statistic mean in this case for our resample data set. There we go. Interesting. It's not quite, it's pretty close to our mean, but not quite. Now, here's where uh, bootstrapping becomes <laughs> pretty magical to me, at least. Let me 
resample many times. So when I click and drag, I remember I copy this formula into new cells and I'm effectively um, just creating new resamples. Let me label these appropriately. Equals one plus the number before. This should just help us understand how many times we've resampled. Okay, so here I've resampled nine data sets and recalculated the mean for each data set. And let me do that. I'm going to do it a hundred times. <laughs> Ah, that was pretty quick. So I've resampled the data 100 times. Now, if I take this data, or my output here, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it as values. The reason I did this for this example, remember every time I change what's in a cell in Google Sheets, the random number updates. and uh, just to quickly look at our confidence intervals. I don't want it updating. So I'm going to take this data and I'm going to sort it. Okay, so now I have uh, a sorted data set that, I, uh, that I've resampled or my sorted means that have been resampled, and I've performed this resampling a hundred times. And when I sorted, my lowest value is 60-ish, my highest value is 81-ish, and now let's change these colors so that's not confusing. And so I can simply count up one, two, three, four, five, to get our lower bound on our confidence interval. And count down 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, to get our upper bound of the confidence interval. And why is this? Well, if I were to plot this data, here I'm going to insert and then chart and histogram. There it is, it's hiding. This histogram is directly related to our probability density function. Actually with a little finagling we could make this be our probability distribution function. And the area, if I had been this differently, the area under the curve from zero to 63-ish, or from uh, the end here to 78-ish would be about 5%. So that's all there is to bootstrapping. Um, there are a few points to watch out for. Make sure to, when you're resampling your data set, to create data new data sets of the same size as the original. If you start to increase the size of your data set, the central limit theorem will get you and whatever your data, however your data was distributed, it will start to look normal. Um, and there are some caveats if you suspect that your data isn't independent. Um, maybe one d data point is related to the next, there, there might be some special ways to resample your data. But all in all, I, I really like this technique. It's powerful. And actually, I really like that I can plot out the histogram. Um, it makes it easier for me to understand what the 90% confidence interval is, rather than going to, say, a z-score table. Um, this I can actually visualize it. So I hope this piqued your interest in bootstrapping. If you're not familiar with spreadsheets, uh, they're very powerful tools and intuitive, especially with these nice uh, pop-up help menus. Um, and please leave any comments or questions or critiques. I'd like for this to be a good and useful video for people. And have a great day.